again, Skylar with Lean Frontiers. If you do have any questions today, please use the chat feature and we will get to them if we can and if there's time at the end of the today's webinar. This webinar is being recorded, so please allow us 24 to 48 hours to get the video processed and we will send the link out to you. With that, I would like to introduce Tracy O'Rourke. Tracy has been a consultant for 20 years. She has trained over a thousand people, mentored 300 plus people, and has helped complete 300 plus projects with results that range between $50,000 and $8 million in savings. Her facilitation expertise runs the gamut from facilitating leadership retreats with top executives to facilitating process walks, Kaizen events, and project team meetings. With that, I will hand it over to Tracy. All right. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well today. Thank you so much, Skylar, for the uh, for the introduction. And I am going to be talking about how to use task cards to build new behaviors. So I'm going to share how what is called commishy by boards or task boards have been used specifically for new leader standard work behaviors. But before I do that, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Just In Time Cafe. That's where uh, I, I co-founded this, this uh, company organization with Elizabeth Swan, my partner in crime. And we really wanted to, to create uh, and cultivate a hub where problem solvers can connect, share and grow. So we do provide free webinars and videos we also co-host a podcast called the Just In Time Cafe featuring lean authors, practitioners, and leaders. Uh, people like Jeffrey Liker, Mark Rabin, organizations like the nonprofit San Diego Humane Society, and how they're deploying process improvement at UCSD Health as an example. So if you haven't heard of our podcasts, check them out. I think you're going to like them. And we do have three core values. We focus on cultivating community we focus on having a trailblazing spirit, and we believe in a rising tide that lifting each other up, we will strengthen the global problem solving community, and that is good for the planet. And so let's cover the objectives for today and the agenda, shall we? So today's webinar, you're gonna learn about what commission buy or task cards are. You're gonna know how to use them and you're gonna know enough about when these are good tools to use. I'm gonna show you how an organization use these task cards to implement leader standard work. And I'm gonna briefly discuss how to maximize the usefulness of these cards in a virtual environment. So that is the agenda. And we've only got 30 minutes, so why don't we go ahead and get started? So first of all, what is a task card? So a task card is really a double-sided card that is green on one side and red on the other. The colors of each side is different, but usually the information provided on the card is the same on both sides. So these cards are meant to be flipped from red to green easily when tasks are complete. So that is really an important thing. And so ultimately, what is a task board? So a task board is really a set of multiple task cards for selecting or for managing selected tasks. So you're not gonna put every single task on here. So some of you are like, well, I would never use this. I have an action item list and I have a calendar. You don't put every single task on here. You have to really decide what you really want on here and what makes sense. But this is a this is the visual management aspect of using these cards. So at a glance, you immediately know what tasks have been completed and what tasks are not yet completed. It's a simple check card system that can work in all kinds of work areas or even at home, you can create a chore board for your kids. So like any tool, like I said, you have to understand what the tool is and how it works best and how you think it can apply in your situation. Uh, the example shown is a task board for daily management. So let me make this a little bigger so that you can see it. So for each day of the week, there is a column of task cards. And at the beginning of the week, all of the task cards are flipped to the red side. And as the week progresses, 
the tasks get completed and the cards are flipped to green, indicating that the task on that card is complete. So guess what? You can tell what day of the week it should be according to this board. So what day is it? How many of you have used some of these before? Well, it should be Monday, since the only tasks that are completed for the week are for Monday. We can, we can see that because they're green with one remaining task to go. So this could be really helpful to know at a glance if tasks are getting done. And if today's Wednesday and the board looks like this with red cards for Tuesday still showing, then either someone isn't doing the task or someone is not flipping the card. Either way, that needs to be corrected. So daily management of tasks is one reason why people use task cards, especially for tasks that a department or a team may share. So those could be really exciting. So here's another example of this is, you can do it however variant you want in terms of a task board. You can create a daily board, a weekly board, a monthly board. And that could be things that a department at tasks that a team or a department may share. And basically if it's a daily board, all tasks begin at red during the morning. And as they're completed throughout the day, the cards are flipped to green. And that's the beginning of the next day, same thing. And that is the, the same situation for weekly tasks or monthly tasks. So it can be really helpful to make these things visible, especially when you're learning new behaviors. That could be really a way to keep it top of mind. The board can uh, create instant communication about what has been done and what has not been done. It's definitely an easy way for a leader to monitor the status of task two. It's easy to operate. So that's also helpful. Um, and it can be just very simple instructions. It's flexible and changeable. And again, I've seen people use these boards at home for their kids or for things that they have to do daily, weekly, or monthly, just simple things to keep them top of mind. So ultimately it can be really helpful. Um, these are some of the reasons why you would wanna implement task boards. Um, and what I'm gonna really specifically talk today about is the, um, the um, <clears throat> how it applies to leader standard work. So let's see. Um, okay, so let me see here. So we're gonna talk a little bit about leader standard work. So these are things that, so leader standard work. So for those of you that don't know what leader standard work, that is a whole other webinar, <laughs> unfortunately. There's a lot of things for leader standard work. So what I'll say is, Stan, leader standard work is very similar to standard work and what we know to be standard work. A, if there's one best way to do something and it's standardized. So as a leader, if you have leader standard work, these are really best practices that leaders embrace for implementing process improvement. So a lot of these, these, these tools, these leader tools are things that organizations that have been successful with lean have implemented. And so I'm going to just share what that looks like. So there's things like tier boards or tiered huddle systems or tiered huddle meetings. You can have huddle meetings, leader process walks, using A3s for people that are problem solving, but really A3s are great coaching tools, tools that we use tools that can work really well when you wanna coach somebody to learn. There's also 5S checks and leader reflections. So this is not a, a complete list of the examples of leader standard work, but they are some, many of the common tools that we have. I think also, depending on what industry you go in, leader standard work has different names. Like for example, in healthcare, Leader standard work is defined very specifically as leader reflection, looking at where you spent your day and where you should be spending your day. And that, that in particular is, is labeled as leader standard work. But beyond that, in, there's lots of industries that are using many tools for leader standard work. So I'm gonna share uh, what one organization has done to use these task cards to help all of their leaders 
develop leader standard work. So the, the leader standard work tools that they chose to do were things like leader process walks. They really were looking to improve their culture. And so they really wanted to implement leader process walks. They also wanted to implement a tiered huddle system with tiers one through five. And they also wanted to create boards that could be used for those huddle meetings. And then they finally also wanted to implement A3s, both for problem solvers and coaches. Because quite frankly, what I find is often people want to use A3s and they wonder why people aren't using them. And the number one reason is leaders aren't asking for the A3s. So if leaders asked for the A3s and said, where's your A3, their people would probably use them more. So it's um, kind of one of those things where you have to ask for it and then people know it's important. So this organization really was trying to get started with these new behaviors. And what they decided to do was to create uh, some sort of visual task card specifically for these new behaviors. So you can see that these bot on the bottom of this slide, these were the cards that they created for these different leader standard work elements. So they had one, two, three, four, five, six items. And they actually had another one, visual management that's down here. And so they had a card for each one of these. And I'm gonna give you an example of what it looks like on the, one of these cards. So one of, this is a tiered board card and you can see that it lists some of the questions that they would be asking themselves about tier boards on this card. And so these were things that would help people to identify what, what, was, what sort of defines success to do on a tier board. So in this example, some of the questions are uh, checking on the tier board. Is the tier board being used on a regular basis by the team? That would be kind of important, wouldn't it? Um, is it being used to communicate goals, status, process improvement, progress? Are problems visible? So what's interesting about this card is the card was being used not only for the leaders who were trying to build a tier board, but also also for executives or directors that were looking to see how the progress was coming along. So they would be using it as a form of monitoring, a monitoring card, if you will. So uh, people could look at this and they would know, okay, this is what, this is what this means. This is, this is what success means for a tier board. And so it was used in two ways by the people that were trying to implement these boards and, the, and for the level of management that was checking on these boards to see if people were doing it. So this of course was all pre-COVID, but I'm gonna show you how you can do it in a virtual environment too. So as you know, the cards, this looks, this gives you both. So what they would do is they would cut it out and fold it. You can tell that these were done in paper because guess what? Things change, is this working? Are these the, the right questions on this card? So they wanted to make it changeable. So they created these, these paper cards basically, and then they would um, use it uh, just like it's shown here on the screen and they would actually pin them on the wall um, and use them to remind them to do it. So if it were red, they hadn't done this task yet whenever those tasks were assigned. Let me see if there are any questions so far. Picture is fuzzy to read over the stream. Are those days at the top? Okay, I hope you were able to see that. <laughs> Let me see, I could make it bigger. I think you were talking about this one. So hopefully you can see that. But yeah, those were days of the week at the top of the this chart and then it had different tasks that you would do for each of those. So let me know if you have any other questions about that. So these are some of the other cards that the, the, this particular organization was using. So this is the huddle meeting card. And these were questions again, that were important for them to learn. Okay, are huddle meetings occurring regularly? Are, are they reporting the status? Are we actually, do we have um, improvement or tasks, assignments to improve the process? So sort of running the business and improving the business. Those were things that were important questions to ask about the task board, about the different huddle meetings. And then lastly, I'll share this one. So this is 
a rounding card. So this organization called it rounding. We know it to be more like leader process walks. Sorry, I had to go on mute because my kids are home and they were chasing the dog. So hopefully you didn't hear that too loud. Um, okay, so rounding card is really, so leader process walks are when people actually go and talk to the people, they do a leader Gemba walk or a process walk. And you actually, your goal is to really learn about the process and understand what the work is being done. How do you know it's working? And this was a great, this was something that people were not really comfortable with implementing. And then when they actually implemented it and saw the value, they really liked it. This was actually one of the most favorite things the leader did was to get out of his office. And every Thursday he would do a leader process walk for one hour and it could be, and he, it was not a secret, you know, they knew he was coming because really it's not a gotcha moment. It's not, oh, I caught you doing something wrong. That's not the point of a leader process walk. So it, everybody knew what the schedule was and it was really a, an opportunity for him to learn what's happening in this area. Um, and I think I, ha I happen to be in town for one of the one of these particular leader process walks and ended up going with the director to on this leader Gemba walk. And it was the process that he was going to be shared uh, that they were going to display and show him was a vendor signing up to do business with this particular organization. And the leader sits down and they go, go ahead, try to register, pretend you're a, a vendor. Well, within the first five minutes, we couldn't even, we didn't even know where to go. It was so unclear. And he's like, this is horrible. And of course it wasn't about any of the people that were doing the process. It's how the process was designed. So the good news is, he saw how painful that was for a vendor from the vendor perspective. And he was like, yeah, we, we really need to put this on the list of process improvements. So uh, it was a great way for him to learn about what processes were happening and how well they were working, which is a wonderful way to involve a leader. And in order for you to learn more about leader process walks, you got to take another, another class. <laughs> um, you can come to our UC San Diego Lean Leadership course, if you like, that I teach with Elizabeth Swan starting June 1st. Uh, so that is an example of a rounding card. So again, these are what the cards look like. I'm sharing these in, in great detail. So if you have more questions about that, please let me know. Uh, let's see, I see a few questions here. Um, so is there a place where we can buy the board and the pre-printed cards? Yes, you can at the 5S supply store. They sell them there. Um, there's probably a couple other, I bet you you can get them on Amazon. They're called T cards because they look like T's. And so you can find those. Can you share the very first example of the task card again? Oh, sure. No problem. So that would be this one. And this is the tier board card. So again, the information is the same on both sides, but there's the green side and the red side. So these were the very first ones they did where they literally printed them, cut them out, folded them in half, and then used a magnet to put them on a wall or a push pin. And again, you want things to be changeable early on, especially when you're trying to help have people learn new behaviors and build new behaviors because you want them to you know, uh, make it work for them. The process has to work for them too. If the process doesn't work for people, it's going to be harder for them to implement. Uh, will you be given a copy of this presentation? Sure, I think so. <laughs> okay, so uh, Raquel has a question. I did not get to understand how the cards changed from green to red in the commission by board. It seems that the red and green colors are fixed with bar. Good question. So really, um, you have to pull them out and turn them around and then you put them back in. So it is a physical uh, turning of the card. Um, and that probably isn't super clear because I'm showing you both sides of the card, both sides. But yes, as you complete the task, all of them are red. And when you are finished completing it, you turn the card around to the green side of the card. So I hope that was helpful, Raquel. Let me know if you have more questions about that. Okay, so I have been talking about uh, the cards in particular. And a lot of these cards and these questions are based on the book by David Mann, How to Create a Lean Culture. So if that is, if you have a high interest in some of these cards and the leader standard work pieces, 
that's always a great resource as well. Um, and so we, we actually um, customized the, the questions a little bit. Like I said, they changed it from a leader process walk to a rounding card. And so those are some of the things. So, uh, so this was a great way to do it is again, we created a template in PowerPoint and they would print them out. Uh, so then what, what do you do next? So now you've got to create, so how, how we did it was we actually, we created these task cards and then put them on the calendar for when they were going to get done. So we sort of combined the task board, the commission buy cards with a calendar of when it should be done. And so it's weekly, daily, monthly. You can see here on the far right, this is a, uh, this is one section, one group. And these are when they would have all of the cards. So each of these cards is when they are doing their huddles, when they're doing their process walks, when they're actually gonna be doing some problem solving. And so as you go through the week, you turn them green or you go through the month, you turn them green. And you can easily see, hopefully, that this particular board, uh, what, what time is it in the month? Well, it's around the fourth week because we still have some red cards that have not been done. So this was really powerful because every section, all the leaders had a board specifically for them in each section. And it was pretty clear and obvious who was really working the board and who wasn't. And having the boards themselves created, uh, well, let's just say a little peer pressure. Um, so as you guys know, not every leader is gung ho for making change and changing their behaviors. And so at one point, uh, one of the leaders said, well, I have to do it now. Everybody else is doing it. It's really obvious that I'm not doing it yet. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Okay. Well, it works like that. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. So you should really get on the bandwagon. And um, so it was really helpful to see. And then what's really cool too, is we definitely leverage the timeframes so that people can observe as you're learning it, you want to see other people and how they're doing it. It helps you feel like, okay, I could do that. That doesn't seem that hard. So it was really helpful to see people with their huddles. It's the entire process is visual. Leader stand and work, the entire process is visual. And using these commission by board uh, tools and task cards uh, really make it uh, visual. So let me know if you have any other questions. So what this organization also did is they also set a goal for when what, what does success look like for some of these? So I'm just gonna share two of the goals. So for the huddle meetings, these were kind of, they said, you know, it'd be really nice to get to one of these goals by July of, at that time it was 2019, I changed it to 2021. Uh, but they said ba they had a basic, a target and a you rock uh, as a target for leaders. So they said, if you're at the basic level by July, that means you're having huddle meetings occurring regularly at the tier three. Um, at the target is you want, we wanna focus on the status of the process as well as the results. So that means during, the, during these huddle meetings, you can see the process. You know, A lot of transactional processes, you can't see the processes. And so they're more visible um, if you've created a high level map. And then how's the status of those processes, which means they had to figure out what, what, what success looked like, what are some of these metrics, um, and what does success look like for these processes. And then the UROC column was, uh, it results in task assignments and follow-up. So you can see the status of the process, and you're getting some results, and now you've, you're also creating assignments as follow-up, like process improvement follow-up or other things. So that was really the, the targets that they were hoping for. And they really felt like by making it more concrete, like, okay, can't, you just can't have the huddle board up or the huddle or having these huddle meetings. You, you actually, there's, there's three levels. So that was really helpful for some of the leaders, excuse me, to have. So the director had a board that looked like this. So after a while, so everybody had their own task boards and commission by boards, 
for their pieces, but then also the director would go to different departments to monitor the huddle meetings and the tier boards and the and monitor leader process walks. And he would just pick different departments and he would have assignments for each of the departments and he would just go and monitor how those were going. So he was also on a schedule for monitoring how these things were happening. And that was really, really helpful. So we're coming up on the end of this and um, it could be, so really this is a system, just like most things in the, in the lean management world, it's a system of activities and behaviors that you're making visible on a calendar or by using task boards. And you're really, um, you can instantly know, you have an instantaneous idea of what activities are happening at a glance. You walk up to the board, you can see what things have, have done, have been happening. And again, I really like using the commission by boards for leader standard work because they are new behaviors. They are things that you want to keep top of mind for leaders to do. And what better way to do that by making something visual like this. So it worked really well in terms of adding these behaviors for leaders. Um, and so how would you do something like this virtually? So that could be a challenge too. And you can do it. It can absolutely be done. There's definitely tools like Mural. So here's a, here's a, a vir virtual task card in Mural. And this is a calendar. And all you do is you can upload any photo of anything in Mural. So you could do something like this where you replicate it. It's a virtual board now. And if you're a director and you've got lots of direct reports, you can have each department put their board, their commission by board in the mural and you can look at it every day if you wanted to electronically. So it's very transferable in a virtual environment to use vir visual management uh, to help with the leader standard work. So I'm gonna see if anybody has any questions right now. We've got about three minutes. Um, so someone asked, how do we get access to more webinars? You do at the JIT Cafe. And that was by Elizabeth Swan. Well, <laughs> great question, Elizabeth. <laughs> so you can go to the JIT Cafe. Um, if you don't have any other questions, here is uh, my email. You can send me a note if you'd like to get a hold of me. Or if you want, you can just visit us at the JIT Cafe, www.jitcafe.com. We've got free webinars, we've got podcasts. Uh, we just interviewed, as I said, the San Diego Humane Society last month, and it was a great interview. They talk about their culture of care, and this week, we're going to actually launch our latest podcast featuring UCSD Health and what they've done to implement lean in their vaccination superstations. So I hope this was helpful to you, and... I would love to, I don't know if any of you have had a bad experience or a good experience using task cards, um, or if you have any questions, I could stay on a few more minutes. Tracy, there are a couple um, in the Q&A section that I, I know you answered the last one. Okay. Um, let's see, in the Q&A or the chat? In the Q&A. Okay, let's see. Okay, are details recorded on or near the cards as to why red or green? Um, so most of the time, the cards indicate that it has been done or it has not been done. So it's, it's a discrete measure, right? Yes or no. And so that's really what the indication of the yellow and of the red and green are. Um, however, there are ways that people use red and green where there's a definition needs to be created. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, so our good question from Scott, are any of the tasks on the board dependent on another or is it required that each task be independent? That's great. So there was some tasks that were dependent on the other. So for example, um, tier boards, having huddle meetings typically require that you huddle around a board of some kind, unless of course you're just doing a daily stand-up. So often the prerequisite was you had to create a board before you can start to uh, initiate the huddle meetings around the board. So I think that can help. 
Have you seen this completed electronically at all? Yes, we have. And I just showed you in mural how that was done. Um, it's, it's really easy to transfer some of these cards uh, into the mural like I shared. And if you have more questions about that, just let me know. Let's see. Do you have a template and mural that can be shared for leader standard work? Wow, Serena, she's just asking all the really good questions. I could probably send you a link for the simple one that I put together, but literally it only took me maybe 10 minutes. Have you seen this completely electronic? Yes, we did. Okay, anything else? Did I answer all of those? Yes, looks like all of those were answered. Thank you for Ooh. the prompt on that, Skylar. You're welcome. And let's okay. see. Okay, good. And somebody wants to be our guest. All right, Brent. We're going to have to give you a call. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you for joining. I hope you liked the webinar and I hope to see you soon at the cafe or Thanks at more than frontiers my... webinars. Yeah. So just a reminder that the link for the recording will be sent out um, about 24 to 48 hours to get it let us processed. Um, if you need anything, just reach out to us at Lean Frontiers or Tracy directly. Everyone have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.